On this video, I'm going to be giving my first impressions of the newly launched DJI uh, 3 drone. Now, this video is completely unsponsored. What do I mean by that? In other words, DJI did not give me this drone for free to review. I have purchased it with my own money. And whilst I am in no way suggesting that DJI do stipulate what creators will get the drones for free to review ahead of launch uh, should say, surely there is a degree of being compelled to say something nice when you've just been given a drone that costs just under £1,400. So let's get this open then. And first of all, you can see it comes with this really, really nice case let's just bin that box we don't need that box so this case is a similar sort of thing to the case you can get with the fly more kit on the dji mavic 3 okay what i do like is rather than a zip you have got this little latch which makes it much easier to be able to get in and out of your bag and let's just have a look at what you get inside so first of all we have got some spare props okay now they're going to come in very handy but i'm going to explain that in a few more minutes so we've got some spare props and what's really good about these is you actually get three full sets so one full set to go on the drone and two spares of every single one so really um normally you want to get one spare set if that and um, we've got a full two spare sets that's really good from dji there so next then let's take a look and we have got this nice charging hub right here this of course is the fly more combo because i wanted some additional batteries okay so as you can see two of the batteries are in this hub the third one is in the back of the drone now these are pretty much much very high capacity batteries they are absolutely much bigger than the original air 2s batteries and one thing i have to mention from the very beginning is you are going to have to make sure you have got yourself at least a 65 watt charger um, i will leave a link to the one that i use in the video description below because if you don't use something like that you are going to be waiting a hell of a long time for these to charge now what is new for the dji uh, 3 um, and this charging hub is if you have got three batteries that have got a little bit of battery life in them what you can do especially if you're on location this is useful you can transfer the remaining power in two batteries to one of them to give you one good full battery or as full as it possibly can be now that's a really really clever um thing to think about doing um and it saves you potentially having to carry a car charger or if you do find yourself in a situation where you just need a couple more flying minutes um to finish a shot or a project you're doing you can of course just transfer the battery power into one of the batteries and um, to make sure you've got that little bit more flight time so putting that to a side then we have also got this this is the new dji rc2 controller the screen controller now there is a couple of little differences that you're going to be able to see many of you have asked the question regarding this controller as to whether it works with any other dji drones sadly the answer to that is a big fat no not at the moment this controller is reserved just for use with the dji uh, 3 now two glaringly obvious differences is the fact that we now have these antennas on the top now we have got antennas here and here and also here and here so of course this does give you more additional antennas which is designed to improve the signal over and above the old controller that many people did complain about okay however with this new dji air 3 and some of the technology it's got built in that's not the real reason where why you're going to get a stronger signal but i'm going to explore that in a few more moments once we're finished looking at everything so just a very tiny observation many people will not really notice but i do um they have reprofiled the back where the sticks come out basically meaning it's actually much easier to remove the sticks and um, whereas the other ones seem to be a little bit more complicated um but essentially, you know, that's just um, a little observation. Uh, I'm sure many of you won't really be bothered, but just something that I noticed. Uh, we have now got the missing um, host option on the bottom of the controller as well. I'll just move that closer so you can have a look. We've still got one USB, but we used to have two. Okay, so I'm not yet sure because I've not tested it, whether we can plug a microphone directly into that USB. Um, and of course, we've got a card reader uh, for screen record and etc as well but this does actually come with an internal memory which is always nice so we're not always having to use a memory card um 
so that's always nice just in case you do forget it or you leave it out it does have an inbuilt memory now one of the major complaints with the old controller so this one right here um, is it was quite slow technology okay and it was a little bit laggy um, now they do say this has got an improved processor which I would be very glad to see and at some point I'll do a little um, comparison video booting the both up and see which one can get you flying fastest that's always quite interesting just to see whether they have improved the startup times with the increased processing power now one additional tiny tiny minute little detail with this controller is when it comes to the control wheels here uh, they are slightly more ridged okay so uh, you can just get a little bit of a better grip on them over and above the old controller so let's put that to a side then and let's just look at the main goods of course the drone itself so as we remove it from our bag i just want to comment one little thing on the bag actually um now if we look inside this bag uh, with the dji mini 3 bag or the mini 2 bag i could generally fit um, the drone the osmo pocket etc um microphones uh, this bag is really really tight for space okay so just the most obvious thing i could suggest is if you are planning to take additional equipment with you and you want to use this case you can do because when it does come to these batteries these batteries dji claim will give you around 46 minutes minutes flight time we all know you're not actually going to get that in a real world situation but still if you have got three batteries with you um, you're going to have a long enough flight time so you're really generally not going to need uh, this charging hub with you now of course if I do put the charging hub inside there you can see there's not much space for anything else however if we take the charging hub out and just release the batteries okay and just put the batteries down at the bottom there is now absolutely loads of space to be able to put cameras, action cameras or anything else you might want to carry with you. So just a little tip there that because yes, um, it's always nice to have the charging hub and it is cool that it's got that feature that I've already spoken about, about transferring the power to uh, charge up one particular battery. You've got enough flight time with three batteries so you can always do what I've just done there and give yourself a little bit more carry space. So this is the DJI Air 3 drone itself. Now, first impressions, it is quite a big unit and of course it is heavier of course than the original DJI Air 2S and of course the DJI Air 2. So if we just fold it out it folds out the usual way that DJI do now with the bottom ones uh, rotating and the front ones moving uh, outwards as normal. Now one thing you're going to notice with the Air 3 right off the bat is just how big it actually is. It has significantly been upsized from the DJI Air 2S and the Air 2. In fact if I just grab the DJI Mini 3 Pro, um, yes the Mini's uh, always been a bit of a toy, but when the Mini 3 Pro came out, it absolutely um, trounced the Mini 2 for size. But this is just so much bigger. Um, you, know, you can presumably tell when I put them together. Um, the Mini 3 Pro is like a toy, if I'm perfectly honest with you, compared to this one. Um, and obviously, there has been a bit of a weight increase on this one as well. But I think primarily that is down to the additional battery capacity. However, if I just dump my Mini 3 Pro down there and grab the Beast, which is of course the Mavic 3 Classic, hopefully they can fit me and these two in the same frame. I'm limited for space in my studio, guys. Now, whilst you can tell the Mavic 3 Classic is a tiny bit heavier, if we actually look at their size and footprint, hopefully that's coming across on camera, um, there's not a huge amount in it. Um, they're almost the sort of same size. If I rotate my camera, um, you can pretty much see that. Um, yeah, so really quite a decent size upgrade um, on this Air 3 then. So let me just put that away. Um, so of course these props are the quick release props we know and love so much better than screws. Okay. Um, one thing I have found with this is the gimbal cover is an absolute pain um, to get on and off. You almost have to just, so let's just try and do this here. So you need to squeeze it and then it, uh, squeeze it and it clips off. Unless I'm doing that completely wrong and like a moron, that is actually really difficult. And of all the DJI drones, I thought the Air 2S had a difficult gimbal cover. That's on another level. So the first thing you're going to notice, of course, about the camera is it has now got a dual camera setup. You've got your telephoto lens and your traditional wide angle lens. Now, obviously, yes, um, many people have complained that the specification of the main lens is closer to that of the DJI Mini 3 Pro, whereas the Mavic 3 Classic um, 
has got a bigger sensor, but because this is a stacked sensor, I'm seeing incredible results from this drone. So it's not always about specification, it's about how it actually applies itself in the real world. Now, instead of talking about the camera specifications, that's not what I'm going to do. Instead, I'm just going to get straight into showing you some footage. So this is a quick shot I have taken using the DJI Air 3. Of course, one of them was using the traditional wide angle lens, and one of them was of course using the telephoto lens. So if I just run those one by one, okay, you can see the image coming out of this drone is absolutely crystal clear. You can see we're slightly underexposed which is always better to do but there is absolutely no grading gone into this video this is a quick shot recorded straight from the drone without any alterations whatsoever however if we do take the same shot with the telephoto lens you can see we have just so much closer okay um almost given the effect that we had flying in a really perilous situation really close to the trees and it just captures an absolutely superb shot but in fact we're actually flying over 30 meters away okay so this is just a whole new perspective and of course the picture quality is absolutely superb so i must admit guys i'm absolutely full of praise um for this on that on the back of that i think basically both shots looked absolutely fantastic but that telephoto lens uh, really is a bit of a game changer in all honesty now of course i also want to demonstrate the 48 megapixel versus the 12 megapixel just so you can see the differences between the two so first of all let's just pop both of those on screen this is of course the same image um same place nothing changed okay uh, just switch in between 12 and 48 and then what i'm going to do is i'm just going to zoom in say 200 percent for example um just so you can compare the details between the two okay um, so you can see for yourself any differences and you can decide which setting is best for you basically i'm not the type of youtuber that's going to tell you the best settings what you should be using okay i will always give guidelines but really it's about finding your own way and of course what works for you now this drone has got full 360 degree obstacle avoidance this has got two sensors at the front it's got two sensors at the back and it's got two sensors underneath now one of the major issues with the dji air 2s is it only had front rear and upwards whereas this has got full 360. now because this does have the side optical avoidance sensors one of the biggest things to test is of course the active track capabilities i've been out testing this and giving it a good run through its paces and basically it was a little bit hit and miss uh, there were some instances where it got through gaps that i thought was absolutely impossible in other respects it looked like it could easily get through and it chose to just be stuck and I had to help it. Now, when you are a YouTuber just like me and you're trying to put these drones through its paces, especially using active tracking features, there is a huge chance there is going to be something go ever so slightly wrong. And fair enough, it did actually go wrong. During my active tracking test with the DJI Air 3, I did have a little incident where I came a little bit too close to a branch, resulted in a few broken props. This one, for example, is obviously pretty much destroyed on the ends, okay, um, as well as matte as well. And that essentially is why I always make sure that I have my drones covered with Cover Drone. Cover Drone are a UK based independent insurance company as an alternative to DJI Care Refresh offering everything due to crashes, flyaways, pretty much any mishap you can think of, you name it, you are covered. They even offer worldwide cover and a like-for-like -like basis replacement, subject to a £50 excess. Now, just for example, if you do have DJI Care Refresh and you cannot actually recover your drone in the event of an accident, you have a much higher excess because you have got no drone to be up to centre them. Whereas if you are insured with cover drone, that excess remains at £50 pounds or whatever it is in your local currency cover drone also offer public liability insurance so if you do accidentally fly your drone into something and cause damage this public liability that you can include to the value of either 1 million or 2 million will have you covered under every eventuality now if you do want to get a quote for yourself i will leave a link in the video description and just to back up what i am saying this is my policy for full disclosure i of course do use this company and i've had absolutely fantastic service out with them and i'm sure you would too.
Now when you are flying a drone, no matter where you are, the biggest thing to consider is of course safety. Now safety is absolutely paramount and one of the contributing factors is of course making sure you are in control of your drone at all times, thus meaning that you have got a strong and stable connection. Now what is absolutely brand new for the first time ever on the DJI Air 3, we now have got three bands when it comes to the operating frequencies. We have got the traditional 2.4 and 5 gigahertz frequencies, but now we have also got that 5.1 to 5.2 frequency now honestly guys when i've done my testing in the past on the channel okay i showed that how autel drones could absolutely trounce dji because they was also operating on that 5.2 gigahertz frequency now if you consider most home wi-fi routers are kicking out a frequency of 2.4 and 5.8 None of them are really running on 5.2. So essentially, that channel should be pretty much clear to ensure you get a much better interference-free flight on your DJI Air 3. And I would hope and pray that this feature is rolled out to all upcoming DJI drones. This really is an absolute game changer. And just to give you an example of that, unfortunately, within the DJI Fly app, we cannot specifically select that 5.2 gigahertz frequency, which I found incredibly frustrating because I think that many of you, um, if you could do that, you should just fix on 5.2. However, looking at the transmission tab and leaving the drone in dual band, you can see it's actually already selecting that 5.2 frequency. Even though we can't manually select it, you can see that is what it's chosen to operate on. And that pretty much backs up everything that I said when this drone specification first got leaked, that this 5.2 gigahertz frequency will give you an absolutely rock solid connection. Something that I will, of course, test on the channel in more detail at a later date. So to summarise, so far I'm finding the DJI Air 3 incredibly impressive. There's nothing I've really found that I don't like at this current moment in time, okay? Of course, give me a little bit more time to do some more testing with it and I may change my opinion. But in all honesty, so far it looks pretty damn good. Yes, people are going to say, well, you should just buy the Mavic 3 Classic. But if you factor in, by the time you've bought the Fly More kit, that becomes so much more expensive than this. And of course, the Mavic 3 Classic only has the single lens where this has got your dual camera set up. Many of you are going to be happy if you already have a DJI Mini 3 Pro. Um, the only reason why you're going to look to potentially upgrade is of course going to be that wind resistance. This thing is so fast, it's absolutely incredible. The way this thing rockets up and it can ascend up to 10 meters per second, which is the fastest of any DJI drone I have owned so far. So that's really good, especially if you're getting out with tricky situations or if seagulls take a specific interest in your drone as well. I like the fact that they've now introduced waypoints as well, um, a much wanted feature by many of you, and I do wish they would have given waypoints to the DJI Mini 3 Pro. Um, don't really buy the reasoning for not having it due to the side obstacle avoidance sensors, because of course quick shots and master shots, um, they don't have a obstacle avoidance sensors at the side, so just give us waypoints on the Mini 3 Pro. Many of you would be happy with that. But anyway, I digress. So to wrap up this video, please do let me know what you think to this drone and what essentially you would like me to test. Like I've already mentioned, I will be pitting it against the Mini 3 Pro and the Mavic 3 Classic in a variety of signal strength, tests, etc, etc, just to give you the buying information you may require. Overall, yeah, I'm very happy with this drone. I think it does a really good job. I'm super impressed by the picture quality. I really like the new controller as well, okay, um, especially with that 5.1 gigahertz frequency. I love the fact it's got waypoints. Um, it's also pretty quiet. Um, compared to the Mavic 3. The Mini 3 Pro we know is pretty much super silent, but this wasn't that intrusive when I was flying it, um, so that's always positive to hear. So if you did like this video, please do give it a big thumbs up. It tells the YouTube algorithm that more people just like you might like to watch it. If you're not already, please do, of course, hit that subscribe button for all the upcoming videos I'm going to do uh, featuring this drone. And of course, until next time, see you again soon.